Ever since Pal World was released back in February of this year, I spent a lot of time playing this game. Some may say a bit too much, but that's beside the point. Because I've had a chance to experience pretty much every single pal in the game and see what they have to offer, I've come to find some pals are much more useful than others in my day-to-day -day playthroughs. So today I want to talk about some of the pals that I most frequently use in the game. What's going on everybody, it's your boy Speaker, and today I'm going to give you my top 10 most frequently used pals in Pal World. But before we get into this video, just a friendly reminder that if you enjoy any of the music you hear during this video or just want to support the channel in general, it's all part of my DMCA free music label, Speaker Red Studios. This is a music label I created and run where all the music on this label is completely DMCA free, so go ahead and use any of these songs for your content creating needs. We currently have over 70 songs available with more added frequently, so if you're interested in checking that out, all the links will be in the description below. Finally, I want to mention that I made a poll on my community page asking which topic you would all like me to talk about, and this is the one that most people voted on. So if you want to take part in future polls, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you see when they're posted and maybe leave a like while you're at it. It really does help out the channel. But with that out of the way, let's get back to the video. So before I give you all my list, there's a few things I do want to mention. For starters, this list is going to consist of pals that I use in my party while exploring the world, so there won't be any sort of base pals on this list. This is mainly because I already have a video talking about the best pals to use at your base, so I feel it'd be a bit redundant to have a bunch of them on this list as well. Now the second thing I do want to mention is while I do use a majority of these pals frequently, I also have a few pals on this list that I don't use too often these days but I would have used more frequently in my earlier playthroughs. This is mainly due to some of these pals being added later to the game way past the point where I would find them helpful. However, for those who don't have over a thousand hours in one world, I'm sure a lot of these pals would be pretty helpful. Finally, the very last thing I want to mention is that I'm sure there are plenty of other pals that other people might find more useful than the pals on this list, but these are just the pals that I personally use on a regular basis, so feel free to let me know in the comments which pals you found helpful during your playthroughs of Pal World. Lastly, these pals aren't in any particular order, so I wouldn't worry about where each of these pals are placed on this list. But without further ado, let's start talking about my most frequently used pals. Now to start this off, I have 5 honorable mentions that didn't quite make the list, but I still think they're worth mentioning. And to quickly go through them, my honorable mentions are Gobfin, Kitsune, Warsect, Lulu, and Prickster. But with those honorable mentions out of the way, let's talk about my top 10 frequently most used pals. Starting with number 10, I have Jet Dragon. So I'm sure most people are aware that Jet Dragon is a great pal to have on your team and I definitely agree with that considering he's probably my most used pal out of any of these on this list. That being said, I mainly use Jet Dragon as my main way to quickly travel around the map and honestly I don't really use them for fighting too often. I have a few different Jet Dragons with different passive skill combinations, but the one I specifically use all the time uses these skills to help him move as fast as possible. And because he's the fastest pal I have, I named him SPEED! But honestly, it's really nice to have a super fast pal that can zip around the map easily. Especially when doing tedious tasks such as going to every skill fruit tree across the map and getting all the skill fruits. But because I literally use them almost every time I play the game, that's why they made the list. Now moving on to my next pal on this list, I have Anubis. The reason why Anubis made this list is because they're my go-to pal whenever I need something built or crafted. I know I mentioned before that I didn't want to put any base pals on this list, however Anubis is an exception to that rule. While I do have a few Anubis that I use around my base to help me craft items and structures, I'll also usually have a fully upgraded worker Anubis in my party whenever I'm working on a bunch of stuff at my bases. It doesn't matter how long you play the game, there will always be something you need craft, and having a pal that can quickly help you craft those things is super helpful. But because I've been using Anubis as my main crafting pal pretty much since the game came out, that's why he's on the list. Talking about my 7th most used pal now, I have King Paka. While they aren't the most powerful pal in the game, and definitely not the fastest pal either, the main reason why he's on this list is because of his partner skill. Their skill increases the player's weight capacity by 100, which can be upgraded to 140 if you upgrade them fully in a pal condenser. There are some other pals in the game that also increase the player's weight capacity, however as far as I'm aware King Paka is tied for giving the biggest increase. Along with being one of the earlier pals you can find as a boss, they really are a useful pal to have during your playthrough in case you need some extra weight capacity. Plus with the addition of the Ring of Freight and Lightweight Plasteel Armor, all of these combined can give a player quite a bit of extra weight capacity if they ever needed it. So because they're a pretty helpful pal even during the late stages of the game, that's why they made the list. But moving on to the next pal on this list, which is Shadowbeak. Now Shadowbeak made it on this list because they're my main pal that I use to clear dungeons. For starters, they're a strong pal that can clear out a room of enemies with Divine Parcher 1 and 2, including bosses at the end of the dungeon. On top of that, they're one of the faster pals in the game, so they can run through dungeons fairly quickly. 
The only problem I have with this pal is they do get stuck on some of the smaller doors. But for me, it's personally not the biggest deal in the world to hop off, walk a few feet, and send them out on the other side. But because they use this pal in every dungeon I go in, that's why I added them to the list. So talking about the fifth pal I have on this list, and that's going to be Catrus. Now for those who've watched any of my upgrade guides, you might remember that I always mention to use a Catrus to help you get dog coins to purchase pal fruits, and that's because I use them whenever I go out and get dog coins. Farming dog coins is without a doubt the most annoying thing to do in this game, and with the amount of pals that I'm upgrading for videos, I'm pretty much out farming Mimogs all the time. Now for some who may not be as focused as I am on getting dog coins, this pal might not be super helpful to you. However, whenever you get to the point where you're trying to upgrade your pals to be as powerful as they can be, it's pretty nice to have a pal that makes this frustrating grind a little bit easier. Finally, I will mention that you can also use a Blaze Howl Knock since they do essentially have the same partner ability as Catrus. That being said, you can find a Catrus much earlier in the game, which is why I always suggest them over Blaze Howl Knocked. But moving on to the next pal on this list, I have Knocklum. So besides having a special place in my heart for being the first upgrade guide I uploaded to this channel, he's easily the strongest pal in the game and the main pal I use for combat. With him having great stats along with his partner ability substantially increasing his attack and defense for a short period of time, there's pretty much no pal that can stand up to this guy. In fact, this pal is the single reason why I was able to defeat every single tower boss on hard mode. Since you're able to feed any skill fruit to any pal, I gave all my knocklums the strongest moves of each type which made them easily be able to take on all the tower bosses. Finally, I'll mention that Knocklum makes an amazing bullet sponge on the oil rig, which is just another reason why I use this guy so frequently. But because he's just so insanely strong and essentially my main combat pal, that's why I made it on this list. So talking about my number 4 placement on this list, and it's actually a pal I just started recently using, that's going to be Felbat. Now I've known about Felbat for a while now, but I've never really used them due to using a wide variety of different pals already. However, thanks to this individual who's been watching my channel for a bit, they suggested that I make an upgrade guide on this pal. So after making an upgrade version of this pal and using them for a little bit, I've come to find them a very useful pal in combat. While their general stats are pretty decent, just like many of these pals on this list, their partner ability is the main reason why they're so helpful. Their ability grants the player in Felbat a lifesteal effect which absorbs some of the received damage and restores health. While I overlooked this ability in the past, after using them a few times for some tough battles, I found this ability to be a useful way to gain back some quick health in case you need it. And unlike other healing abilities such as Lillian's partner ability, there isn't any sort of cooldown on this lifesteal which is pretty nice. There have been many times in the past where I've lost a battle due to something as simple as fire damage, but having a pal that grants a player lifesteal can easily prevent situations like this from happening. But because they've become one of the more frequent pals I use, I had to add them to this list. And moving on to the last three pals on this list, these are some pals that I do find helpful, however they aren't useful to me these days due to when they were added to the game. But I'll explain in more detail as we talk about each pal. So coming in at number three, I have Mimog. So the reason why Mimog made this list is actually for a couple different reasons. The first reason why they made this list is because of their partner ability. Their ability makes it so Mimox can unlock chests without using a key. Depending on how much their partner ability is upgraded in a condenser will determine which chests they're able to unlock with them being able to unlock gold key chests when they're fully upgraded. Now the reason why I personally don't find this ability helpful to me in my current world is mainly because by the time these little dudes were added to the game, I already had all the keys I could possibly need so I really didn't need to use their ability. Plus I have a gold lock pick so if I really needed a chest unlock for some reason I could just use that instead. However, if I ever started a brand new world, I know I'd be using Mimog a lot to unlock a lot of chests. As for my second reason why they made this list, and that's going to be for farming gold. While Mimogs will only drop dog coins while found in the wild, they will however still drop gold when caught and butchered. With them dropping somewhere around 1000 to 2000 gold per Mimog, they're a great way to farm gold as long as you have enough cakes to keep them breeding. So even though I personally don't use them in my party these days, I still find them to be a very useful pal. Now on to the second last pal on this list, I have Yakumo. Now to be completely honest, this pal is pretty bad when it comes to all of its combat stats. But just like a majority of the pals on this list, the key to them being useful comes from their partner ability. When fighting together, it becomes easier to encounter pals with the same passive skills as this pal, which can be a major lifesaver when trying to get specific passive skills on certain pals. Now as useful as this partner ability is, I personally don't have much use for it due to it once again being added too late to the game. By the time Yukuma was added to the game, I already had a wide variety of pals with all the passive skills I needed, so a majority of the pals I needed with specific passive skills I could get through breeding. Plus, with a lot of my pals having maxed out hidden potentials, it just makes more sense for me to do it that way. That being said, I could see myself using this pal in the future to get passive skills on certain pals that would otherwise be much too difficult to do so. For example, I made a video in the past about making the weakest pals in the game overpowered, and I used different breeding combinations to get all those pals with the passive skills I wanted. 
but if I were to have used Yukumo, I could have gotten skills such as Legend, Eternal Flame, and Siren of the Void on these pals which are much too difficult to do through breeding. So because this pal could definitely be useful to those who are working on getting pals with the passive skills they prefer, I wanted to make sure to add this pal to the list. Now moving on to the last pal on this list and that's going to be Dojin. Since I have a literal missile to zip around the map on, it's pretty easy for me to get to any teleporters around the map. However, before having Dead Dragon to get around the map, it was sometimes quite a hassle to get to teleporters, especially when trying to gather materials such as coal or sulfur before they added mines for them that you could build at your base. So having a pal that could have teleported me back to one of my bases from anywhere on the map could have been super helpful during some of the earlier parts of the game. And while I don't use this pal too often in my current world, I know if I ever start a new world, I'll definitely be using this pal much more frequently. But with that last pal that's going to be my top 10 most frequently used pals in the game, let me know what you think down below. Let me know in the comments which pals you most frequently use during your playthrough of the game. Finally, once again, if you want to support the channel, you can check out my DMCA free music label in the links down below. That's all I gotta say for now, so thank you so much for watching the video, and I'll catch all y'all in the next one. Take it easy, everybody.